What's up guys and welcome to Drive Steady. In this video, we're comparing two of my favorite SUVs on the market, the all new BMW X7 and Mercedes GLS. We'll talk about topics like horsepower, towing capacity, interior dimensions, cargo space, and much more. So if you're interested in the BMW X7 and the Mercedes GLS, stick around for the rest of the video. Before getting started, a big thank you to all who watch our videos and subscribe to our channel. If you're interested in other comparison videos like this one, check out our channel page for more videos and other car reviews. If you have any other suggestions for cars that you would like compared, please send us a comment below and we'd be happy to put something together. The X7 is uncharted territory for BMW as it's an all new model in their SUV lineup. Standard four-door sedans aren't the only ones getting bigger. SUVs are also growing in size and to satisfy that need or opportunity, depending on who you're asking, BMW created the X7 to compete with the likes of all other full-size monster SUVs in the market currently. The design of the X7 was a controversial one, especially up front with the introduction of the massive kidney grills. Many have spoken on their dislike for the new front end design and how it's dominated by those rather large kidney grills. Otherwise, BMW has been building comfortable, luxurious SUVs for quite some time now, and the X7 just continues to expand to their SUV lineup, which is now up to seven. Now let's flip over to the Mercedes. The GLS is in its second generation after a wildly successful first go around where the GLS was considered to be the top of the full-size luxury SUV food chain. The redesign brings Mercedes' new design language to the GLS with a new front grille, attractive looking headlights and taillights, and of course interiors with large dual screen setups. There really isn't much history to talk about these cars so enough of the fluff, let's set the ground rules for the comparison. I'll be comparing the base level trims for these two cars. In the BMW X7, it's the X-Drive 40i, and in the Mercedes GLS, it's the 450 4Matic. The first topic will be the engines and the power figures. Starting off in the BMW, the X-Drive 40i trim comes equipped with a stout 3-liter straight 6-cylinder turbocharged engine that produces a healthy 335 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque. The BMW is mated to a fantastic ZF 8-speed automatic transmission that's found in almost all other BMWs. On the other end, the Mercedes GLS is also equipped with a 3-liter straight 6-cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 362 horsepower and 369 foot-pounds of torque. The slight difference here is that the Mercedes has something called EQ Boost. The setup uses a 48-volt hybrid system to supplement the gasoline-powered engine with short bursts of an extra 21 horsepower and 184 foot-pounds of torque, bringing up the net horsepower and torque figures to 383 and 553 respectively. The Mercedes GLS is using a new transmission. It's the 9-speed unit that's slowly making its way into all new Mercedes cars. Remember when transmissions started getting more than 6 gears? We're almost up to 10 now. It's pretty crazy when you look back and how much better transmissions are now versus even 5 years ago. Back to the numbers, the Mercedes bests the X7 in both horsepower and torque by 27 and 39 respectively. Those numbers grow even more when you factor in the EQ boost for horsepower difference of 48 and a torque difference of a staggering 223 foot-pounds. I bet all that extra torque is going to come in handy once we compare the towing capacities here soon. Next, let's look at the weight. These cars are full-size SUVs, so the expectation is that they'll be heavy, and man do they live up to that expectation. The BMW X Drive 40i tips the scales at 5,370 pounds, and the Mercedes GLS 450 is even heavier, coming in at 5,701 pounds. A friendly reminder that these cars are huge. They can seat up to seven people, have luxurious interiors, all-wheel drive systems, and on top of all of that, still have to meet the same safety regulations of small sedans, so heavy they will definitely be. Highlighting the difference between these two cars, the BMW X7 comes in at 331 pounds lighter than the Mercedes GLS 450. I wonder how much of that extra weight in the Mercedes is contributed by the 48 volt hybrid system. You're going to look at me funny in this next category, but now we're going to compare acceleration. Yes, 
We're comparing acceleration because it's important even in a 5,000 pound SUV because you need the car to have enough pickup when you're merging onto the highway or need to make a quick pass. Plus, you don't want to be driving around in a slush wagon, do you? The BMW X7 accelerates from 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds and the Mercedes GLS 450 does it in a tick slower at 5.9 seconds. Considering that these two cars weigh over 5,000 pounds, under 6 seconds is pretty good. Also consider the fact that both these engines have a good amount of torque down low, you'll feel the urgency when you press on the gas pedal from a stop. Low end torque is very handy in daily driving situations even more so than horsepower. Regardless, both the X7 and the GLS 450 accelerate at a similar pace. Now let's talk about the interior dimensions because you're buying an SUV for more space, right? So let's find out how these cars compare on the inside. In the front headroom category, BMW 41.9, Mercedes 39.4, front legroom 39.8 to 40.3 in the Mercedes, shoulder room 60 inches versus 59.3, headroom 39.9 to 40.2, rear legroom 37.6, 41.9, rear shoulder room 58.1, 58.5. Now we're moving to the third row. Headroom 36.6, 38.9, 33.3 in the BMW, 34.6, this is reference to legroom, third row shoulder room, 47.9, 50.3 in the Mercedes. A couple brief notes, both of these cars come standard with three row seating and have configurations that allow for six or seven person seating. Both of these SUVs have front and rear cup holders that are heated and cooled. Pretty cool, huh? All right, now looking at these numbers. One thing that jumped right at me, the Mercedes GLS is bigger in the second and third row with all respects. Leg room, head room, shoulder room, all of it. In fact, the BMW X7 offers more room in only two categories, front head room and front shoulder room. It's quite obvious that the Mercedes offers more room for your passengers, but the X7 is comfier up front for the driver and the passenger. Staying on the inside now, let's see how much cargo space you've got in these two full-size SUVs. In the BMW, with the third row seat up, 12.8 cubic feet versus the Mercedes 17.4. The third row down, 48.6 to 48.7 in the Mercedes. Second and third row seats down, 90.4 cubic feet in the BMW, 84.7 in the Mercedes. So let's dive into these numbers a little bit. With the third row up, the Mercedes takes the crown with 4.6 more cubic feet of storage. The third row down is pretty much even, but the GLS takes it by 0.1 cubic feet. When you fold both the second and third row seats down, the X7 has more compared to the GLS with 5.7 cubic feet. So if you need to have your third row seats up all the time, then the GLS will offer more cargo space. If you're going to be moving big pieces of cargo around that will require your second and third rows to be folded down, the X7 is probably the better choice. You're wondering what this really translates to. Yes, I get 5.7 more cubic feet or 4.6 more cubic feet, but can you tell me how much more stuff I can put in the car? Allow me to explain. Let's start off with how the cargo space metric is calculated. You take the length, width, and height of the trunk space and multiply them all together. Simple, right? Good. Now for reference, a standard airline carry-on bag takes up to 1.43 cubic feet of space. Applying that to these two cars, with all of your seating rows in the upright position, you can store three more carry-on bags in the Mercedes. On the flip side, if all of your seating rows are folded down, you can store four more carry-on bags in the BMW X7. One thing to keep in mind is that if you use up the entire available cargo space, you're probably going to have a hard time seeing out of the back window because remember, cargo space accounts for the entire height of the trunk. All right, so we just covered the interior and the cargo space of the X7 and the GLS. Now let's look at how big these cars are on the outside. Lengthwise, BMW 203.3 versus Mercedes 205 inches, with 78.7 to the Mercedes 84.9, height 71.1 versus 71.8, and the wheelbase 122.2 versus 
After putting these charts together, I was surprised that the Mercedes is bigger than the X7 in every single category. In length, almost two full inches bigger. In height, almost one full inch taller. And the width is where the biggest difference is between these two cars, a whopping 6.2 inches wider in the Mercedes GLS. A couple observations here. After seeing the size of the two cars, it makes sense now that the GLS has more space versus the X7. Remember the GLS was bigger in all interior categories compared to the x7 except for two one last item i noticed which was kind of strange was related to cargo space remember how the x7 had more cargo space than the gls when all of the seats were folded down now considering the fact that the x7 is basically smaller in all dimensions compared to the gls it's interesting how the bmw is able to pull off more cargo space in a smaller car okay now let's talk about fuel economy in the city, the BMW attains 20 miles per gallon to the Mercedes' 19. On the highway, 25 in the BMW, 23 in the Mercedes. Combined averages, 22 in the BMW, 21 in the Mercedes. Fuel tank size, 21.9 in the BMW, 23.8 in the Mercedes. So overall, the BMW gets better gas mileage in all three categories. So if you're fuel conscious, the X7 may be the better choice for you. A couple points here. First, I'm not surprised that the Mercedes is less fuel efficient because its engine has more horsepower and torque and it also weighs 331 pounds more than the X7. So more horsepower and torque means it needs more fuel and on top of that, the GLS needs to lean on that power more because it has more weight to pull around. The second item, and this is more of an extra credit topic and that's how much it's going to cost you to fill up your gas tank. So the Mercedes has a bigger gas tank versus the BMW by almost two full gallons, 23.8 versus 21.9. The national average of fuel is $2.63. It's going to cost $62.59 to fill up your Mercedes GLS and $57.59 to fill up your BMW X7. It's great that the X7 and the GLS are offered with six cylinder engines because not only do they keep the price of the car down, it also attains better gas mileage. I'd imagine with the weight that these cars are carrying around, the eight cylinder trims are going to be a lot thirstier. Next, let's talk about towing and payload. If you're wondering what's the difference between the maximum towing and maximum payload, let me explain. Payload is the weight inside the car. It includes the weight of the passengers and the cargo. Towing capacity is pretty self-explanatory in that it's a measure of how much weight the car can tow. Even though very few people are buying these luxury SUVs for towing purposes, in the end they are SUVs and they are both very capable, so let's talk about them. Both the X7 and the GLS come standard with all-wheel drive systems. In its stock form, the BMW X7 can tow up to 5,400 pounds. If you select the optional trailer hitch package, which will set you back $550, the towing capacity of the X7 balloons to 7,500 pounds. The maximum payload for the X7 is 1,202 pounds. The Mercedes GLS, on the other hand, hasn't published any towing figures in its stock form. However, similar to the BMW X7, they offer an optional $575 trailer hitch that brings the maximum towing capacity up to 7,700 pounds. Mercedes also has not published a maximum payload for the 2020 GLS, so I decided to use the 2019 model year number of 1,798 pounds just for perspective. Given that I don't have a full set of published numbers for the GLS, I'm going to compare the maximum payload only. The Mercedes bests the BMW in this category by pulling 200 pounds more. Next is the warranty. Both the X7 and the GLS have the de facto standard warranty for most German cars and that's 4 years, 50,000 miles, whichever comes first. Now the difference here is that the BMW also has maintenance costs included for the first 3 years. Things such as oil changes, engine filters, brake fluids, spark plugs, etc. are covered. Mercedes, on the other hand, sells you a prepaid maintenance package if you choose to buy one. They've got three tiers and the one most similar to BMW's is the three-year, 30,000-mile option. Okay, so now let's talk about the topic that's probably most important and that's price. 
The BMW X7 xDrive 40i has an MSRP of $74,895, which includes a $995 destination and handling fee. On the flip side, the Mercedes GLS 450 comes in at $76,195, which again includes a $995 destination and handling fee. The difference between these two cars is an even $1,300. The BMW X7 and the GLS are priced very similarly and have narrow margins with regards to pricing. One interesting note is that the base price in the Mercedes GLS has gone up over $5,000 when comparing it to the outgoing 2019 model. As mentioned, the X7 is an all-new model for BMW, so no pricing history is available there. Next, let's talk about colors. I'm a big fan of having a lot of options when choosing the exterior color and I'm glad to say that both BMW and Mercedes are offering a nice spectrum of colors in the X7 and the GLS. BMW is offering the X7 in 12 different colors ranging from a couple light colors to more neutral silvers all the way to a couple dark colors like grey, black and blue. Mercedes on the other end offers the GLS in 11 different colors. Similar to BMW, they have a couple offerings on the lighter side, of course the iconic silver paint, a couple darker colors, and even a green. I really like the Mercedes emerald green color. It's probably my favorite color on the Mercedes GLS. So that's the end of the comparison. Let's sum it all up and close with some final thoughts. With regards to power, the Mercedes takes the category. BMW takes the weight category by being lighter over 300 pounds. Acceleration was 5.8 to 5.9 and the BMW takes that one. Interior dimensions, as mentioned, the Mercedes takes all the categories except for two up front. Cargo space, Mercedes takes it when all your rows are up. BMW takes it when all your seating rows are down. Exterior, Mercedes is bigger with all respects. Fuel efficiency, BMW takes all the categories. Towing, Mercedes takes it when you have the optional trailer hitch by 200 pounds. And finally, in price, the BMW is cheaper by $1,300. The BMW X7 and the Mercedes GLS are highly capable, luxurious, full-size SUVs. They represent the top-of-the-line SUV in their respective model lineup and are ranked equivalent to the 7 Series or the S-Class sedan. The X7 is BMW's first attempt at the full-size SUV market and I think they did a good job. Originally, like many others, I was turned away by the rather large kidney grills, but after seeing the X7 in person and sitting in it, my feelings changed. The kidney grills aren't that bad and scale well to the rest of the car, and in my opinion would look better with blacked out treatment on a darker color car. The Mercedes GLS has been around the block once and it's more capable than ever in the new 2020 model year. Mercedes' new design language looks good and dances on a thin line between classic and aggressive and the introduction of the new 48 volt hybrid platform brings it to the edge of engine technology. If I had to choose between the two, I would take the Mercedes GLS with the AMG styling package in emerald green. Something about it appeals to me more than the BMW does, which is surprising because I typically lean towards BMW design more often than not. How about you? Would you go with the new kit on the block in the BMW X7 or with the Ringer Mercedes GLS? Thanks for watching. Until next time, drive steady.